Now guys, the wait times on some new cars is getting ridiculous. In fact, in some cases, it's getting so bad that some manufacturers on certain models have actually closed their order books for the foreseeable future. But rather than waiting 12 months to two years or even three years for that new car, there's a bunch of used cars that will do pretty much everything the new cars can do and they might even save you a few thousand dollars as well. So to challenge some of the most in-demand models in a range of different categories, here's a few alternatives, and we're gonna kick off with the most in-demand new SUV out there. It's the Suzuki Jimny. Just as cool as it is capable, this funky little box on wheels is so popular, Suzuki have actually paused orders for automatic versions until further notice, and the wait time for manual examples has blown out. But here's the thing, while there's no denying its mountain goat-like abilities, the vast majority majority sold are used predominantly around town or to go lightly off-roading at best. Plus, many argue that it is insane to fork out well over $30,000 for a tiny utilitarian box on wheels that has all of the on-road manners of a small truck and features levels of practicality and safety only slightly more impressive than that of a motorbike. So instead, why not buy a Toyota RAV4? The RAV4 that we think matches the Jimny for basically everything short of the really extreme off-roading ability is the first generation 1995 to 2000 three door. It's within a few centimeters in terms of size. It exudes a 90s retro cool. It's arguably nicer to drive on road. Yes, it is old, but it's a 90s Toyota, so it'll probably go forever. It has a superior power to weight ratio, so pulling into traffic doesn't require Tom Cruise levels of fearlessness like it does in the Jimny. And okay, look, it's not the safest form of transport, but if you're buying a Jimny, we doubt the levels of safety are all that high on your priority list anyway. Plus, good examples are becoming collectible, and with a lift kit, some all-terrains, and a few tasty off-roading accessories fitted, we argue that it can match the Jimny for the tough little nugget persona that makes the Suzuki so attractive. And with pricing for good examples starting from around about $10,000 and topping out at around $20,000, you'll potentially have $20,000 or more left over to add you know, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and personalize it to your heart's desire. Okay, next up it is small, hot hatches, and the one that everyone seems to want at the moment is the Hyundai i20N. Thanks to Hyundai closing its books on orders for new i20Ns, used pricing currently ranges from forty dollars to nearly $50,000, which is a hell of a lot for a pint-sized pocket rocket. Okay, granted, it is one hell of a pocket rocket, taking out Top Gear's coveted Car of the Year award and winning over not only the world's motoring press, but basically anyone that has ever steered one. And fair enough too, 150 kilowatts, clever limited slip diff, loads of Tekken features, there is so much to love. But when you break down to the core of what the i20N offers, which is its small size, enough doors and practicality to live with on a daily basis, funky and restrained yet slightly extroverted looks, a great reputation for reliability, incredible performance and a superb driving experience, there's another car that ticks all of those boxes. It's the Honda Civic Type R. Forget the EK9, EP3, and FN2. Unlike the i20N, they all lack rear doors. The FK2, it never really made it to Australia in any real quantity, so it's out. And the FK8 and the new FL5 are tens of thousands of dollars more than the Hyundai. So what's that leave us with then? Well, it's the FD2. Okay, yes, it's a sedan and not a hatch, obviously, like the Hyundai, but it's very nearly the same height and width and only slightly longer than the i20N. But most importantly, in terms of driving, it's lighter and it puts out more power. Plus, that power gets to the ground via a brilliant limited slip diff. Its handing ability is a thing of legend. Its near faultless Japanese build quality has resulted in an impeccable reputation for reliability. And while it might not feature the latest tech like the i20N, much of that stuff is pretty easily fitted with aftermarket equipment. Plus, more and more are showing up outside of Japan thanks to grey imports, and they can be all yours for thirty-five dollars to $40,000. Sure, it doesn't have the i20N's five-year warranty, but you'll be potentially saving $10,000, and it's a Japanese-made Type R, so chances are very little will go wrong anyway. Okay, let's get a little bit more sensible now. Do you know what the wait time is for a brand new Toyota a RAV4 hybrid, it's 18 months to two years. Seriously, look, forget that. 
there's a better alternative. Look, we get it. The current RAV4 in hybrid form is an extremely attractive proposal. It's fuel efficient, it's practical, it's safe, it looks good, it's loaded with tech and features, and being a Toyota, the support network is unparalleled, and its reputation for reliability is near class leading. But with these incredible wait times, current but pre-owned hybrid RAV4s are asking anywhere from forty to $75,000 here in Australia. So rather than waiting forever or paying over 50 grand for a RAV4, why not save a few dollars and spec up in luxury to the Toyota's fancier cousin? It's the Lexus RX450H. Starting from around about $45,000 here in Australia, you can get yourself into a fourth generation RX450H from 2015 to 2022. It'll have near identical levels of practicality. Both are incredibly close in terms of size and interior space, but the Lexus should feel more luxurious to live with and it's loaded with safety gear and depending on the model, will feature a similar range of tech and equipment. Both being ostensibly Toyotas mean they're both exceptional in terms of build quality and reliability. And even though the Lexus has a larger, more powerful engine and a superior power to weight ratio, less than a litre per 100 kilometres separates them in terms of fuel efficiency. So forget buying or waiting for a 2022 RAV4 Edge Auto E4 for $75,000, save at least $10,000 and get into a 2018 450H instead. But what if you want your practical and sensible car to also defy the laws of physics while still wrapping you in a, a cocoon of luxury? Well, that's probably why Audi have paused orders on the new RS3 and why some used examples are asking around $150,000. Yes, the new RS3 is an absolute weapon, but why spend this sort of money on a compact but rapid Audi or potentially wait till the orders reopen when you can buy something arguably more special right now for less? It's actually another Audi, it's the RS4. In terms of firepower, the new RS3 and the B9 RS4 share nearly identical power to weight ratios. They're both loaded with all of the tech and features you'd ever need, and they are both superb examples of what an RS Audi is all about. But the RS4 is more practical, and being a wagon, is instantly cooler. Many argue that the RS3's Haldex all-wheel drive system is inferior to that in the RS4. With a larger six-cylinder engine in the RS4, it has more torque than the smaller sibling, and with pricing ranging from from about $115,000 to $140,000 for models only two or three years old, why wait or pay an enormous premium for the lesser car? It's simple, just get an RS4. Okay, this next one is bound to create a stir, but bear with us here. Ford Everest V6. For a brand new one, you're going to be waiting over a year at the moment, or you're going to be paying anywhere from sixty dollars to over $100,000 for a current but slightly used example. That is a tough pill to swallow. There's no denying the new V6 Everest is a hugely impressive thing. Strong performance, good fuel economy, decent towing and off-roading chops, plenty of new tech and safety features, it seats seven, it's got excellent practicality, it even looks pretty bloody good. But Ford have apparently had their fair share of gremlins in terms of mechanical reliability with the previous generation. And while the current Everest in general is so far proving to be a pretty good thing, it is a ute-based SUV, and at times, there's no escaping its workhorse underpinnings. So, why not save potentially over $30,000 and get yourself another big seven-seat SUV that does very nearly the same thing? It's the Mitsubishi Pajero. Okay, even in the final edition Pajeros, no matter even if it's in a top spec Exceed trim, will match the new Everest for the lovely, touchy-feely atmosphere of the brand new Everest. But when you break it down, the Pajero does make a whole lot of sense. The Pajero isn't based on a ute platform, it is its very own model, and you can tell. In this final generation, it has been around since 2006, so Mitsubishi have not only ironed out any issues, they've honed and improved it to within an inch of its life. It offers very nearly the same levels of practicality, off-roading and towing chops. It looks great, especially with some chunky wheels and tyres. And remember, it can literally be tens of thousands of dollars cheaper than the Everest. Okay, engine performance wise, the Everest is gonna leave it for dead. Although, there are plenty of tuning kits available for the Pajero which will have it matching the Ford. Yes, the tech in the Everest is at a whole other level, although much of that can be sorted in the Mitsubishi with aftermarket parts. And yeah, the Everest has the confidence that comes with a new car warranty, 
Although Mitsubishi have been offering 10-year warranties since October 2020. So find a 2021 model Pajero and its warranty might actually outlast the Ford. Although fitting aftermarket tuning kits and accessories can occasionally void new car warranties. So just read the terms and conditions first. Look, overall, is the new Everest really worth 10, 20 or even $30,000 more than a two or three year old Pajero? Or are you happy to wait for over a year to get into the new Everest, even though a Pajero does very nearly the same thing and it can be yours right now. And if that wasn't controversial enough, let's talk Ford Ranger Raptor. To the fans and journalists out there, the new Raptor is simply the best 4x4 dual cab ute that money can buy. Incredible suspension giving it immense abilities, it finally has an engine worthy of the Raptor title, it looks tough and it features loads of equipment and all of the latest tech that you'd ever need, especially for a dual cab ute. Hence why wait times for a factory fresh one has blown out to well over a year and current but pre-owned examples are asking anywhere from $100 to $130,000. More than $100,000 for a 4x4 dual cab ute. Seriously, that is insane. Especially considering that you can save yourself easily $20,000 and get into something very bloody similar. It's the Volkswagen Amarok W580X. Now look, obviously the Walkinshaw enhanced Amarok, it's not going to match the Raptor for under the bonnet firepower. And the Raptor's Fox suspension is in a whole other realm compared to the W580X when it comes to covering terrain. But think of it this way, how many Raptors are actually being driven the way Ford engineers intended? The vast majority spend most of their time driving around the suburbs, attempting to look all big and tough, only occasionally heading off-road. And even then, only a small percentage of the off-roading Raptors ever really push the limit of what they're capable of. The W580X will easily handle the vast majority of off-roading that most owners will ever attempt. It's based on, until recently, the latest generation of Amarok, so the levels of equipment and tech will surely suffice most consumers. Thanks to Volkswagen's five-year warranty, it'll still have a few years of factory support left on it, it still has one of the nicest interiors of any 4x4 dual cab ute, and it's a bloody lovely thing to drive in the real world. Plus, if you want to use it as, say, oh look, I don't know, a ute, the Amarok can take nearly 200 kilograms more in the tray, not to mention its towing capacity beats the Raptor by a ton. But I know what you're thinking, the Raptor blows the Volkswagen away in terms of sheer performance, doesn't it? Well, yes, but... Even stock, the Amarok will very, very nearly match the Raptor for torque, but this 3.0-litre 24-valve V6 is nearly identical to the engines used in a whole host of other Volkswagen and Audi models. And as has been proven time and time again, with some massaging of that ECU, power figures closing in on the Raptor are easily achieved. But fit some quality aftermarket components and tune it to suit, the Raptor may soon be disappearing in the Amarok's mirrors. Not that we would ever condone that sort of behavior, obviously. But here's the real kicker. A slightly used 2022 W580X can be all yours right now for anywhere from about $75,000. Look, yes, that is still loads of cash for a ute, but even after a few mods to bring it closer in performance to the Ford, is the Raptor really worth over $20,000 more? Now for many, the concept of driving fun while being covered in mud and dirt and sand just, funnily enough, isn't all that appealing. And hence why it's nearly impossible to buy a brand spanking new Toyota GR86 or Subaru BRZ unless you're willing to wait many months for one or pay a premium for a current but used example. Following on from the previous generation's brilliant small light rear wheel drive and driver focused recipe, only this time wrapping it in sexier skin and giving it the power and torque it so desperately needed, in the UK, it took all of 90 minutes for the GR86 to sell out. Here in Australia, allocations for the near identical Subaru BRZ are all but spoken for. And internationally, Toyota and Subaru simply cannot meet the demand. And hence why some owners are asking anywhere from forty dollars to $60,000 for near new examples. So instead, and look, granted this car isn't exactly a direct competitor for the Toyo Baru twins, but it does come with a very solid argument. It's the Nissan 370Z. Okay, look, yes, it is more of a grand touring sports car than the completely driver-focused machine that the twins offer, but the Nissan dominates the Subaru and Toyota pair in terms of the power to weight ratio. It's easily as tunable and can be molded into becoming everything from a track day weapon to a drift master to a comfortable long distance sports tourer, or you could just leave it stock and still have a barrel of laughs. We've actually reviewed the 370Z and to see how good it is, click on the link up here and it's down there somewhere as well.
But the real win again here is price and availability. You can pick up a 2017 or 2018 Z for under $40,000. If you're happy to look at even older models, they start from just over $30,000. And guys, if you're seriously considering dropping $60,000 on a BRZ or a GR86, you can pick up a 370Z Nismo for that sort of money. It's within a few, it's, it, it's, Okay, let's get a little bit more sensible here. You know what the wait time is on a on a B9 RS4? She ain't she 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 she. But this three liter twenty four valve V6 is nearly identical to the engine. Less than one liter per one hundred kilometers. Kilometers? They're like kilometers. They're just shorter. Now guys, we're not saying for a second that the new cars we mentioned aren't worthy or they're not good. Actually, on that, I'm gonna let you in on a bit of an auto industry secret here. All new cars are good. Even the less good ones are generally cheap and have huge warranties. But rather than waiting insane amounts of time or paying exorbitant prices for new cars, surely the used cars that we mentioned are more than worth a look. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. See you next time.